Talk us through your career so far in reaching the position as coach of the Westfield Matildas. It's one of the, it depends how long you've got, how far back you want to go. Uh, I suppose from a coaching perspective, I've, uh, I started out in the days when you had a, a kind of apprenticeship through the through the grades. So probably about 1988, I started as a player coach in the New South Wales Super League with Canberra, Canberra City or Canberra Deacon as it were at that stage. Moved on from there to the AIS. Spell at Sydney, two spells at Sydney Olympic, um, and then in the mid nineties, um, had the national women's job for the first time when they put on a for the first time put on a full time coach and some funding was available for the women's team and and they put some programs in place. I left that after about two and a half years to go to Japan to coach in the J League at San Fresh Hiroshima. Came back from there to go into the the national league again with Canberra Cosmos couple of years there I left to go to the US to coach in their WUSA league, the, the professional league that just started in the early 2000s. Unfortunately after three seasons that league went under so I came back to Australia um, and at that time there was no national league, the national league had finished and coaching jobs were few and far between so I took up a, a, a sort of director of coaching job in, in Sarawak in Malaysia for about seven or eight months. And then at the end of 2004, got uh, re-interviewed for the national women's position in Australia. Was fortunately successful and started that job at the beginning of 2005, and I'm still here now. So, what has been the highlight of your career so far? It's interesting. I find it hard to to look at highlights since I've I've gone into to coaching because <clears throat> I think the highlights are for players, um, and uh, you know you just try. I suppose as a coach. My main emphasis is just, just to try and improve players, do the job at the, whatever club I'm at at the time or whatever job I've got as best I can. I mean, obviously, recently winning the Asian Cup was, um, was, was a big highlight from the perspective of we've now qualified for the World Cup, won a tournament in Asia, um, and did it with a team that was relatively inexperienced. So I suppose that gave me a, um, a reasonably good amount of satisfaction. Were you taken aback by what happened? <coughs> I was surprised. I was surprised in the sense that I didn't expect us to, to win the tournament. I didn't think we were ready to win this tournament because, you know, we've had quite a few changes in the team, and and we went into this tournament probably with a as young a team as we've gone into a major tournament, um, probably with a team with as little preparation as we've had get into a major tournament. So I wasn't quite sure how ready the team would be. <clears throat> and playing in Asia is considerably more difficult than playing, say, here in Australia. So uh, I was hoping for us to qualify for the World Cup, which meant getting into the top three. But to win it was a, uh, a big extra bonus. Talk us through the uh, the bet you had with the, with the girls as well. Foolish bet. A rookie coaching mistake. Yeah, but six months ago when I would have probably done anything to give the players motivation to qualify for the World Cup. Um, I gave them the option of both shaving my moustache and colouring my hair should we qualify for the World Cup. And women being women don't forget these things. So as soon as we got to the, as soon as we beat Japan in the semi-finals, that, I think either that night or the next day they shaved the moustache. The day after, before the final, I had a public hair dye. <laughs> so you said you were a bit shocked with such a young side to, to get that result in the Asian Cup. That must be a real boost for the for the World Cup chances. <laughs> uh, that's so. Uh, it, I think this is what I think going to the World Cup. I believe that if nothing unforeseen happens and we've got the you know no injuries or whatever and we get all the key players on the field, I think we'll go to the World Cup with a very good and a very competitive team. Now, how far that means you go is always difficult to say. I think. Uh, like anything, as we did in this tournament, the only thing we'll focus on initially is trying to get past the group stage. Once that happens, then you literally have to go game to game as you go into a tournament. And tournaments are such difficult things to predict because, you know, I think as we've seen from the Socceroos, um, they can turn one way or the other way very quickly um, and it becomes hard to then recover. So it's difficult, you know, a year out to sort of think about what our aspirations will be at the World Cup, but um, what the Asian Cup did for us is it's sort of set, a, I think, a standard amongst the players. And it's really now, because we've got such a young squad and a, a 
bigger squad of better players, it really now sets the standards of competition within our squad. And going back to the last World Cup, making the quarter-final stage, do you think that you guys can build on that and maybe make it to the next stage of the tournament? If things go right, uh, as I say, you know, you get a very difficult group, it might be difficult to qualify. You know, if you suddenly get a group with the US, um, you know, Germany or um, you know, one of the other sort of, yeah, Brazil or whatever, then that, that puts a different perspective on it. If you get a group where you can get through that group stage and you come through, your players are all fit and healthy, there's no injuries, there's no suspensions, everybody's in, uh, you know, in a good frame of mind, then you can, you know, you don't know how far you can go. So that, that's the key thing is that you hope that the, the tournament works out as you plan it from the start. Changing subject a little bit, what are your thoughts on the Westfield W League? I know it's still in its uh, infancy stages, but what are your thoughts so far? It's surpassed my expectations. You know, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, the standard of football and, and the presentation of the games, but I, th I think it's been an outstanding success. I think, it, you know, I think that the branding and the, the uh, connection with the A-League has been a big bonus. Um, from a playing perspective, it's given uh, more players opportunities to get back in the national team. And the, the W League probably helped four or five players to get in the team for this for the Asian Cup, or get in the squad for the Asian Cup. I think it's raised the profile of women's football um, to a new level. Uh, it's been well received in, in television. ABC have done a terrific job to cover it. So uh, for me, it's all been positive. But the the key thing now is that we must consolidate and then start to look at actually building the league and making it better. And and one of the things I think we can do in that regard is we've got to get out there and we've got to promote it better. We've got to be looking at the, the W League in women's football now getting out there and challenging netball and I think leading into to this season, hopefully next season etc, we need to get out in amongst clubs to get young girls along there supporting the W League. So you said um, trying to grow the, the league as big as possible, do you think it has the, the potential to, to rival you know, some of the larger leagues such as the American League for example? Um, well. We've got, the American League at the moment has only got seven teams. We've actually got eight teams. What we need to do is, is increase the number of games. That, that's the first thing that we, we need to do as we look to, to expand. Um, and then hopefully as it takes a hold and gets more popular, uh, then we get, get more supporters, better sponsorship, better profile. And once you start doing that, then you can start rivaling these leagues because then you can start offering players, you know, reasonable money to play in the competition so it becomes hopefully at some stage a semi-professional competition you can then attract better players from overseas which gives adds an extra dimension to the league and then it can take off from there so certainly i think we've got a good foundation now we need to be keep make sure that stays solid and start to build up these other areas let's talk about the uh, perth glory w league side got quite a, a number of um Talents that are in the in the national setup, so that's a real must be a real positive for WA football. It, it is definitely is. You know they've, um, you know when you look at the probably the first team they started with in, in year one, and you look at the team now, I think they're a far more potent team. And you've got, you know, when Kate Gill comes back and Devana and and Clint McCallum and and Sam Kerr, you get four really critical national team players at the moment. Um, you've also got John Gibson here doing a terrific job in developing some of the, the younger players coming through the system. So you've got, you've got uh, good continuity there. Um, and I think being in Perth and having that advantage of the players working together more often, uh, I think they'll do very well this year.